Ladies and gentlemen, here we are. Game week three is in the books. These are game week four weekly predictions with me and with James. And we promised initially that we'd never do this kind of thing. But we're 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 lowering ourselves, James. That's what we're doing. And we are gonna ask the people watching, I feel embarrassed even doing it, but we are gonna hit a like target of 25 likes on this video. So if you are watching it, you do like what you see, we're not gonna ask at the end, we're gonna ask at the beginning. If you wouldn't mind while I'm talking, scroll down, give us a like. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe Just button. Little. Just a little. <laughs> Me and James. That's all we need. <laughs> Me and James would really appreciate it. Anyway, after that horribly embarrassing thing, which hopefully I'll never do again, but I'm not making any promises. Um, we'll look a little bit at how we did last week in game week three. James, overall, there was a two point gap between you and me. I was ahead by two points. And this week you've leveled the score. You beat me by two points this week. James had seven points. I had five. I got five out of ten right. Which again, if you're batting five hundred or you know, if you if you're five and five, not a brilliant week. But James, I'll be honest with you, there were some kind of crazy results knocking around. Oh, hundred percent. Obviously, credit to you, Chelsea Luton. You got that nailed on as three nil. You also got one nil to Wolves nailed on. So two points there as well. I didn't get a single correct score. Obviously, we were thrown out by a couple of crazy results. But anyway, without any further ado, uh, ado and uh, you know, we'll we'll motor along here nice and quick. Luton Town, West Ham, Friday night game. James, who have you got in that one? Luton Town, West Ham. Oh, I mean, one team right now is just kind of getting welcome to the Premier League. I think it's a bit unfair. They've had, you know, some tough fixtures um, here, there. You know, going against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge, difficult game for them and now they have West Ham a team who right now is absolutely flying Jack you think they went away to Brighton Brighton who Jack said at this moment is the best team in the Premier League they beat them Jack with I think what 20% possession less than that yep. some crazy like, um, like that Chelsea va- dominated for vastly the majority of the game but they find a, a way to win 3-1 against two top teams and Jack I can't pick up I can't pick against them I really cannot pick against West um West Ham and that James Ward Proud connect, connection seems to be working right now. Unfortunately for Luton, I'm going to go against them now, and I'm going to say 3 1 West Ham. Right. Uh, guys, and also, you, you guys, you should know right now, I love a good 3 1. Yeah, James loves a good 3 1. James also loves magically knowing the score I'm going to pick. I'm going 3 1 as well. Yeah, again, guys, I sent James a voice note the moment I saw James Ward Prowse doing his thing. Guys, James Ward Prowse is the most underrated player in this league right now. And again, it's such a great pickup from uh, from West Ham. And West Ham fans, you had the choice between, I believe it was Scott McTominay or James Ward Prowse. You made the right decision. Believe me, that guy is going to do work for you this year and for the years going forward. What a pickup. Super positive with him going forward. Edson Alvarez, I believe, looks okay, and he's going to be a nice player. Um, Rumours with with some more recruitment coming in. They got Mohamed Kudus from Ajax as well. It's all positive at West Ham. And James, I think the thing that's frustrating, the squad is roughly the same. I mean, Declan Rice is a big miss, but this is why last year was so weird. It was you look at the squad and you go, "This is a good team. What the hell's going on?" So these kinds of performances, I know it's early, but these kind of performances, I don't think are too crazy or too unexpected. We're just seeing what we probably should have seen at points last year. Did you did you have something you want to say? No, I'll just also talk about um, Declan Rice, Jack. They got 105 million out. Of t- they got oh, they got just crazy money from him, and the fact that they brought in. Kudus, James Ward Prowse, and Alvarez, Jack yeah, for I think four like four million less yeah. is crazy business for West Ham. Fair play to them. Yeah. They won the chance window. They played the listen, they played Arsenal, they played the rest of football. Yeah. Um I'm gonna take it away with James, potentially the biggest glaring nil-nil game that I think we've ever seen. Um in Sheffield United versus Everton. I am gonna give them each a goal. I think purely out of desperation, because James, especially seeing as it's at Sheffield United, I think Sheffield United will be like, oh, Everton, maybe we can do something. And Everton will look at Sheffield United and go, oh, maybe we can do something. Maybe they cancel each other out, a goal apiece. I'm going one-one, but I'll be honest with you. With the lack of goal threat with both these teams, this could easily be a nil-nil. Who have you got in this one? Sheffield United, Everton. Um, one team who seems to be down with confidence, creating a lot of chances, Everton, but they just can't take it. While you look at Sheffield United, Jack, un- unfortunate not to get a point to get, um, against City. I think I bet against Everton this season, and I kind of do want them to go down. I've said this for the, for the second time in a row. Everton fans hit me, yeah. But um, you're not alone with that thought, though. I think there's a lot of people. Yeah, 
I'm not feeling confident again for um, Everton. I okay. just not. I, I when nil nil would probably be the score here, but just just something about Sheffield United at home. I think that they could nick it. I'm going to say two one Sheffield United, Jack. Nice. And secondly, it's a Jack. It's a Saturday morning game. So usually Saturday morning games, they tend to weird. be a winner there. You know, never three, bet. If it was three o'clock, nil yeah. nil. Never bet on the twelve thirty game. People at home, trust me. That's a word of advice from somebody who's been burned before. Um, James Brentford versus Bournemouth. Two of the kind of more fun teams. I think are kind of nice to root for at the moment. How have you got this one going? Um, Brentford. Listen, fair play to them. Bournemouth. Um, the. the Exact same thing. I, I feel like Bournemouth was a team last year who everybody thought that they were going to go down and they miraculously stayed up. And, and Jack, this season, you know, it's been, you know, here, there, but it's hard for me to pick against Brentford and to me what they've been able to do. I think, Jack, they've got, what, seven points out of their first three games? I don't have the table in front let of me. me. Let me just, let me just make sure there, guys, just bear with me. But about about no 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 they no 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 Jack they have five points but Jack right. they are unbeaten in in the Premier League and especially at home the home record that they do have there I find it hard to see Brentford um taking the victory I'm going to say two 0 Brentford I knew you were gonna pick that I got the exact same thing oh yeah. Jack because oh. I can tell I can I can we we've spent too much time talking football together this is what I hate that's about true it. that's <laughs> true guys um because even the Sheffield United Everton one I was like oh man is he gonna pick the same one um. Yeah, look, James, I, Brentford, I will hold my hands up and I will just say that Brentford are one of these teams I don't have a good feel for. Um, James, I don't really, I mean, Ivan Tony maybe a little bit, but I don't really look at that squad much at all. Rico Henry's kind of nice, um, you know, uh, but like I, I don't look at that squad and go, oh, I know why it's working. I mean, Thomas Frank is good, but d does he do anything groundbreaking? I, I really don't get a good feel for Brentford. But James, week in, week out, they do performances above what I'm expecting of them. And I just have to go with them. I like Bournemouth. I like Areola. And I'm going to be watching them closely over the course of the season. I think you and I are going to get burnt by them in predictions as we go across the season here. But yeah, Brentford at home, I got 2-0 as well. Um, Burnley Tottenham. Um, look, James, Burnley not done what I thought they'd be doing. Um, and I, I felt like I kind of was quick to judge them early on, but I feel like I've proven to be right so far. And I think what's probably going to happen here with Vincent Company is going to be the constant question of stick or twist. Um, I think he is stubborn and I think he believes in his principles and wants to play football the right way. But James, as long as there's no wins or just one or two points that he's getting over multiple game weeks here, I think there's going to be pressure from the board, pressure from fans for him to either adjust his play style or leave the club altogether. And I know that's insane because this was arguably in Europe's top five leagues and it, it throw the championship in as well, make it six leagues. Vincent Company was a revelation last year, but... James, you and I know football is is there's not a lot of sympathy flying around really. And if Burnley don't, you know, make these performances count and stuff, Spurs, especially after the the victory they had against uh, against Manchester United uh, a, w a week or so ago, and then the the victory that they had recently as well, Spurs actually look okay. So. I'm going to stay with Spurs. I'm going to keep on to the fact that I don't think Burnley are going to score. I'm going to go two 0 Tottenham. Who have you got in this one? I think this is the third um, away get a uh, third home game uh, Burnley's going to have, so it's a bit of an issue. But Jack, let's be truthful, be honest. You look at the three fixtures that that that, that they've had: Man City, Aston Villa, and now Tottenham. Three Tough. very very difficult games, and the issue with playing the sort of style that um, Vincent Company wants to play is that Jack, when you a lot of teams play that way, and nine times out of ten, when you go toe to toe with teams trying to play that sort of, this sort of style. The better players usually come out on top, but I like to think at some point they're going to get a goal. But I don't think it's going to be um, against Tottenham. The way Tottenham are playing right now, the way the confidence is going, James Jack, James Madison is is playing out of his skin. Um, uh, right now, you got Basuma being the player that we all thought he was going to be um, at a time there, and Angie's kind of proved this wrong. You know, fair play to him. Um, I'm going to say a Tottenham win, Jack. Hate to be boring again. I'm going to call another 3 1. Oh, 3, three one. One ta Tottenham. The I'm boring. I'm um, boring. That's, that, that, that is my signature. <laughs> Chelsea versus Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest, very active in the transfer market, but not as active as Chelsea. How do you have these guys uh, matching up in West London? I mentioned how Chelsea needed to get a few goals under their belt, belt against Luton. They did that back at home against a team that they would fancy themselves. Um, 
to be if i'm being honest and i like to think that it's um it's going to continue um sterling looks like he's back to his best and 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 you mentioned jack mentioned being underrated james war probably being underrated sterling is probably the most underrated premier league player of all time jack this is a premier league great this is an england great and he right now with his head focus is is pushing chelsea forward and i think he's he's going to be a play a big part in this game i'm going to say 2-0 two, two chelsea at the bridge um, I got 2-1. Um, again, I do think defensively they're a little suspect still. There's still a lot of guys getting to know one another. And I think Nottingham Forest do have a, a Gibbs White, a Brennan Johnson, a somebody who can who can do something that makes you go, whoa. And then, you know, something comes out of nothing. But Chelsea are better. They're better. They're at home. Um, I do think that as weeks go by, we'll see this Chelsea team perform better and better and better. We're still waiting for the Mudrick breakout performance. We're still waiting for all this kind of stuff. The injuries are becoming a problem for Chelsea, a big, big problem. Um, Jackson, I think, will be that guy. I don't know if he's going to be prolific top league scorer, but I think he's going to contribute enough that we say that there aren't really too many question marks around him. And and yeah, look, James Raheem Sterling, I liked that first goal. That first goal, again, I think you and I know this, right? As much as you see the notification come up on your phone and see that somebody scored, it's like, what did the goal really look like? Are we giving people too much credit? I mean, I think you saw there was a load of stuff on social media about it. Estupinian got the assist for that Mitoma goal. It's like a three-yard pass. Mitoma just runs through and scores. It's like, is that really an assist, right? It depends what it actually looks like. And that goal for Sterling, Malogusto, short little pass, Sterling, playing nuts and finishing. That's what we want to see from Raheem Sterling. We know he's capable of that. We want to see that more often. Um, Man City Fulham. I went between convincing Man City win and little trip. I went with the convincing win. I went with 3-0. But James, I will be honest, there's a reason why I had that thought process. We saw what Fulham were able to do at Arsenal, right? And I know that was a strange game, and maybe you can come on and, and, and speak about that when, when you do your prediction here. But I just think, especially without De Bruyne, the squad feels kind of thin. I don't know if you saw the City squad over the weekend, the subs. It was kind of like, who are these guys? Like, these guys are going to try and win another treble or a quadruple? Like, what the hell's going on? Fulham are potentially a trap game, in my opinion. I've been... A bit of a wimp and I've gone for the 3-0 but James I think this could have very very easily been like a 1-1 or maybe even a sneaky kind of 2-1 win for Fulham with something going wrong how do you see this one going? Jack you kind of read my mind a little bit there I see this being a very tricky game for City just like the game against Sheffield United was tricky and they pulled it out the bag at the end Fulham went to the Emirates and Jack they had no right to really win that game Jack they had, they had no right to get a point being 10 man down, Arsenal come back, crowd is up, Fulham are down, they find a way, Jack, they Jack, they stay in and made it hard. And in fact, Triori could actually win the game for them. And I see it having that same sort of fall, Jack, where it's tight, you know, Man City may make one mistake, Fulham may capitalise on it, they get that goal back. And it's a thing where I think what's going to make Man City get through that is their champion mentality. Is their champion mentality. You've seen that champion mentality against Sheffield United and to me they're going to show that again it's going to get frustrating because you look at the Manchester City game this season a lot of them have been very frustrating um, for them the um, um, you had the game against Sevilla Newcastle and also the game against Sheffield United where you get a lot of frustrating games and I think this one might be a tight frustrating game but they're going to pull it out the bag again I'm going to say 2-1 Man City to a minute. And again, guys, I probably should have mentioned this. Marco Silva, him turning down Saudi Arabia. I know I've said that a lot. I think that's a really big deal to the culture of this team and the spirit and the character of this of this team going forward. Um, James, we'll stay with you kind of, in my view, apart from the game we'll get to last and the game we'll get to second from last, maybe kind of sneaky game of the week here, Brighton versus Newcastle. How do you see this one going? Um, Brighton versus Newcastle. Uh, Brighton somehow lost to West Ham. Somehow, Jack, you know, we're, we're all them chances, we're all that possession, you know, the team was just rootless and New and West Ham have been rootless so far. Newcastle, not sure what to make of them, Jack, because I mentioned the fact how they struggle in big games and we've seen the exact same thing there. A game that was in their hands, they shouldn't let it slip and they, Jack, they let it slip. Yep. And, for all this thing about they're going to push on, they're going to push on, they're going to push on. Yet yeah, we've seen two games against two top teams in um, in Man City and Liverpool. And really, Jack, they never really showed their teeth against them. And now, and now they're going to go against Brighton, who you know what happens. If you have a bad day against Brighton, they can embarrass you. They might not score five or six, 
but they can embarrass you with the possession and also score a good amount of goals here. Um, I'm going to back Brighton Jack here. I like what they are. I like what they can do here. I think that they have a bit... First of all, I think they have the better manager. Right. And also, I just think the team's a bit more confident than them. I think Newcastle are definitely shot with confidence right now. I'm going to say... I'm going to have to do it again, Jack. I can't believe it. 3-1 Brighton. Um, I got 2-1 Newcastle. Um, I think that West Ham showed a little bit of a blueprint on how to play Brighton, maybe. Um, and I mentioned this in my preseason predictions. It's taken a while to get there, but I do think we're seeing it. I think teams are going into games against Brighton now, and they're going, we know you're a good team, and we're going to respect you and treat you like the good team that you are. And this is the evolution of a football club, right? This team, you have the respect of your opponent. They're going to play you differently. They're going to defend. What are you going to do to break them down? Oh, you're going to have more of the ball. You're going to have more territory. You're going to leave more space. Now what's going to happen? Because you've got Isak running. You've got Callum Wilson running. You've got uh, Miguel Almiron running. All this kind of stuff. Again, Deserby's not an idiot. There's a lot of talent in that team. And we'll just see what happens. But I just think Brighton might struggle a little more than expected this year because they're going to start being respected, James, like a big technical possession dominant football team. So I'm going to go new Newcastle 2-1 again especially at home I'm not gonna set, think that Newcastle with that great defense are gonna shut Brighton out but I just think a couple breakaway goals I think Newcastle will, will have it in them to beat them um Crystal Palace Wolves James tough one for me um Mateus Nunez obviously being linked uh being linked with people I do want to pat myself on the back a little bit from last week and I know I messaged you about this James you and I talked about Marcus Rashford playing off the left and Marcus Rashford did good things I mentioned as well I do think out of Fabio Silva Sasa Kalacic and Mateus Cunha we're gonna see somebody rear their head and do something that Kalacic goal was nice that was a striker's goal from a team that's been missing a fit Raul Jimenez from however many years ago that was hopefully he retains his fitness and we see Sasa Kalachik start ch- starting for Wolves going forward and maybe sneaking into my fantasy team I do think that Wolves will have more of a goal threat going forward but I will say Palace at home I just don't think Wolves will, will, will have enough so I'm gonna stick with 2-1 Palace I, I feel like I always underestimate Palace so I'm gonna start giving him a bit more bit more credit um Palace two one for me. Who have you got in that one? Um, I don't know what to make of both teams, Jack. If I'm being truthfully honest, there it's a bit of a weird um, sort of game overall. I'm just looking at the history um, of the last three games. So two uh, nil Wolves, two one uh, Crystal Palace, and two um, nil Wolves. There, my biggest thing is Jack. To me, the lack of goals, that lack of um, cutting killer edge, and granted, like uh, Wolves were able to um, sneak victory um, against Everton, but it, it doesn't convince me. It doesn't convince me that they can go to teams and score two, three goals here. They both are time to side. Both teams who I, I appreciate what they can do on like on the ball from a dribbling standpoint. How many great dribblers won't like won't be one they have there? Because I do love myself. Um, mm-hmm. some dribblers. Jack, I see this being a stalemate here. So I'm going to sit on the fence here, and I'm and I'm going to stay for one on. One I was going to say four one or so. one or Jack. <laughs> Sit on the third to go with four one. Um, James, I'm not going to lie. Again, I mentioned Brighton Newcastle being kind of a sneaky good game. Liverpool Villa kind of a sneaky good game as well, especially at Anfield. How do you see that one shaking out? Liverpool obviously with that result last weekend. Um, I'm just looking at the fixtures right now. Um, I feel like Jack, we've kind of we're going to probably do a video on Liverpool in a minute, but we've maybe underrated Liverpool. That was a huge, huge result um, for them. Granted, they're losing, going to lose Virgil Van Dijk for the game, but the confidence that's going to breathe that they're going to go away to a tough ground like Newcastle, Jack, and soak up all that pressure and find a way to hit them with two shocker punches like that. And also, to me, it was the depth of the squad to bring on a player like Davin Nunes, bring on a player like Di Diego Jota, have a player like Luis Diaz come out and still have killers coming off the bench. That is a big part. And maybe when, I'm, when, when we're looking at the title, we might need to consider Liverpool a lot more because they are historically in the last five six years are city's closest rivals and this is a this, this is a tough game because Unai Emery is Unai Emery Jack he will play his own way you know right. he'll go out there you want to play out from the back and that can hurt you we've seen that Jack um against Newcastle where they didn't play bad but once it goes bad 
you know what teams can do. And Liverpool have showed you that they got killers that can really hurt them. Both teams are not great defensively, but I think Liverpool just have a bit more going forward. I'm going to say this is going to be a big scoring game. I'm going to say 4-2 Liverpool. 4-2 Liverpool. Yeah, look, James, I, I've got the same deficit, just, um, you know, just a couple less goals. I got 3-1 for Liverpool. Um, James, we could both be in big trouble here. Um, if Saudi Arabia offer 150 million euros for Mo Salah, I, I'm just saying, like I, I tweeted about this today, I would rip, I would rip your arm off. I, I think Mo Salah is great. I think he's valuable. I think the league's going to be out of touch for, for for Liverpool this year. I think top four, we'll see. But I think with that kind of money, investing in young players and especially the amount you paid for him and what you got out of him, that's a great close to that story. If you're Liverpool Football Club and their their business side of things, um, but again. It's tricky. They may be without their best player when this game happens. Villa, Unai Emery, he's the kind of guy who will go to Anfield with a plan and know what he's doing. But again, too much positivity at the moment going on for them. I do still have questions about them uh, defensively. That midfield still getting to know one another and those attacking players will see if that remains fit or not. I know that's been an issue for them historically as well. Alice one's fantastic, um, I, but I do think Villa will get one. Too much danger. Nicola Zaniolo came on and looked dangerous at points as well. Just want to just want to make sure that his name's uh, his name said on this channel once again. Um, but yeah, three one for me. Um, I'm not going to go as hard on you, uh, hard with you in terms of the goals, but but I'm going to go for three one. Arsenal Man United. This is kind of the big blockbuster of the week. Uh, absolutely, Sunday night, uh, Super Sunday, or is this Monday night football? Uh, this is uh, this is Sunday night. Sunday. This is Sunday four. This is Sunday four thirty kickoff. So the the kind of climax of, uh, of of Super Sunday at the Emirates, Arsenal Man United. Arsenal obviously coming off that uh, that kind of disappointing game um, against Fulham. Manchester United two goals down in four minutes, and then coming back and winning three two at Old Trafford. James, I don't trust either of these teams. Um, I did think for the first, you know, two or three game weeks for Arsenal, it was like, yeah, the football's not good, but they're winning. Well, now the football's not good and they've, they've stopped winning. I mean, it's a draw, so I'm not going to, you know, I don't think it's the most egregious thing ever. But Fulham at the Emirates, that should be three points for a team that's trying to win the title. Um, so Arsenal, tricky to trust. Manchester United in the same way, tricky to trust. I could see this game similar to the Forest game. Maybe Manchester United can see a couple of goals early, but I don't trust Arsenal to see out the game. Um, I do think maybe we'll see Rasmus Hoyland. There's going to be some 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 hype and some pressure on him. Is that going to be a debut goal against Arsenal? Is that a storyline that's that's been written? Um, Bruno Fernandes and, and his performance, he's come out and kind of uh, silenced a few a few haters and a few people. But again, James, I have no confidence in either team. But what I do know is that each team are going to be capable of doing something stupid, which means they concede so I've got 2-2 on this one I'm not going to lie to you um, part of me did want to pick Arsenal by one goal because I know Manchester United's recent record in the big games but I'm just going to say that Arsenal might be a little frazzled at the moment I don't know what Arteta's thinking on, on how his team have played even though the results haven't been that bad but I'm going to go with 2-2 very interested as an Arsenal fan to hear your perspective on this one um, probably the worst time for a fixture to come for both teams because right. if a loss does a, a loss does occur, they have to go into the international break on, on like on a back of a loss against a bit of rival. On it. Yeah, and you know if Manchester United loses, there's going to be more questions. Why can't they do it in a big game? Which they, as you mentioned, Jack, they struggled with last year. The last time that they beat Arsenal at the Emirates was in 2007. Remember that crazy yeah. De Gea game? Um, that was a long time. Yeah, and Arsenal and Arsenal on the other hand, Jack hasn't been convincing. You know, three games and you haven't seen the performance yet but I feel it's more important for Arsenal to take the win than Manchester United I think if Man United get a point I think it'll be a fantastic point um, right. for them but Arsenal need to win I think this is this is, this is a, a big big statement right here if they don't win there's the people talking about the title it might be crazy Jack but that might be out of reach if that's right. the case because these are the sort of games you put your foot down let everybody know okay listen <laughs> we're here we're, we're here to compete the against yeah, um, right, right. you know exactly we're here to compete against Man uh, Manchester City Jack Arsenal are leaky especially at the Emirates especially early on and Man United were able to get an er er early goal last time that they played them the last few games have conceded in the first minute which is crazy and also what's yeah. going on with what's going on with Gabriel because that's really frustrating for me as well because that right yeah. side against Marcus Rashford too oof. 
we can listen. We can, but Rashford don't even seem to have the form that he was in yeah. last season. Rashford Hoyle might come into it, but Jack, I can see both teams right now who struggle to defend. So this is we're we're, we're going to get goals. We should get goals in here. Jack had two two. Both teams are going to score two, but one team's going to score one more. And I'm going to say three two to my team, Arsenal. Hopefully, we can pull out the back same result as last season. Three two, Arsenal, Jack. Guys. As we've mentioned on previous videos before, if you do want to play along with us, there is a little bit of discipline that's needed because we need you every week and we need proof. We're not having this, oh, I had every team to win. We want to see it now. Go in the comments now. While you're down there, and like the video as well. Hit subscribe if you're not, James. And shout out to everybody who actually does comment down below, guys. Next week, we'll get everybody, we'll get we'll put everybody's names down in, in the video who does, who do actually give out their, um, who actually give out their results for the week. So thank you all guys for even following us for that. Um, and also anybody who does like 10 out of 10 or gets multiple like correct scores and stuff, we're going to give you a shout out as well. If you're getting like five, seven points like me and James, we're not going to do too much. But if we do see any 10 point, 12 point with some correct results, we'll, we'll, we'll shout you out for sure. Um, until next time, guys, stay tuned. we got some other stuff coming and we will see you next time.